World of Warcraft is the greatest MMORPG of all time. Hopefully we can all agree with that. Releasing in 2004, it's been relevant for damn near 20 years. Dragonflight, the newest expansion, has been a pleasant surprise considering the last few years haven't been the squeaky clean, ideal version of World of Warcraft that nostalgia constantly reminds me about. Instead, we have Battle for Azeroth and Shadowlands, two expansions some players probably deleted from their memory because of trauma. Going into Dragonfly, it was kinda mandatory for Blizzard to make it good, otherwise this would have been a completely different video. Going through the usual 1000 IQ Reddit responses, forums, and players impressions in game, it seems like Dragonfly has been a step in the right direction for Blizzard. Most people are enjoying the game and this is because of a few reasons. Apart from the gorgeous zones and top tier combat, convenience is is a huge factor. In previous expansions, to obtain any type of meaningful progression with your character, you would have to log in every single day and do the most mundane, boring tasks for the last few years, like world quests, dailies, etc. It's a tactic called time gating, restricting players' progression so that it extends the time they play, funneling more money to Blizzard as you have to pay a monthly subscription to maintain playing the game. This was an incredibly annoying tactic as if you missed even one day, it felt like you were behind everybody else. Dragonflight really fixed this issue that I felt was severely hindering Warcraft, making the player experience horrendous. Now you can log in one to two times a week and get majority of things done. I apologize, the dab was actually cringe. World quests are either weekly or reset every three days. And if you're that percentage of players that are hardcore, absolutely addicted to the game, you can spend hours every day making meaningful progress through reputation grinding or partaking in PvE and PvP. Most players play World of Warcraft with the goal of getting their character as giga chat as possible, because endgame is the main focus. One system they introduced completely revolutionized the game. Dragon riding something way more impactful to the gameplay than I initially thought is one of the best design features they've ever implemented into WoW. Heavily inspired by Good Wars 2, of course. This system makes WoW feel so much more fast paced, as you're able to travel a Mach 20 billion and get to places around the zones insanely fast. The real world is only getting faster. We're consuming content at rapid rates. TikTok literally revolutionized this. Being on that app, you're going to experience so much content in a short time span that your dopamine is constantly getting spiked, hooking you to your screen, and then you look at the time, hours have literally passed. MMOs need to take no, as they're inherently designed opposite of this. It takes tens of hours to get meaningful progression, which causes a major barrier of entry for some younger people. For MMOs to really tap into the youth, a huge demographic for video games, people in their early 20s and younger, the game can't be too slow. It seems Warcraft has noticed this as Dragonfly is significantly more fast paced than any other expansion they've released. The result of this is less mundane content, faster ways to gear your characters, which I feel is a major W and with the updates, optimization to classes, talents, and professions and game modes, it's clear why Dragonflight is so popular. But let's take a deeper look at the data and estimated player numbers to see what's really going on with the expansion. By the way, if you're interested in more immaculate content from myself, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon for good luck. So World of Warcraft stopped publicly releasing their player numbers in 2015 when the game was seriously down bad on their knees. During the World of the Drainer era, my bad for the reminder, I know it's traumatic for some of you, but my best friend Google Trends does a very good job of giving estimates of the amount of attention topics are getting online. Taking a look around the date when Dragonfly released in November 28th, 2022, you can see a spike in the graph, which is typical behavior when a new update comes out for the game. What I found very interesting is when you compare it to Shadowlands release, Dragonfly is beating it slightly, which leads me to believe that more people are playing the game or at least interested in it. I do have to mention that Dragonfly did receive more promotion through the Twitch drops, giving people more incentive to view the game and play. But Shadowlands was released during a time when majority of the world was at home, so it's hard to quantify how impactful those specific factors are. Some classic Andes may not like this, but Dragonflight is actually doing better than Wrath Classic in terms of interest on Google Trends, and that version of WoW had very heavy interest and seemed to be very popular, especially with the very long queues. Another good thing I noticed is Dragonflight's graph is going up past its release point. It flatlined for a bit then started going up again, which is probably due to the PvP season and PvE raid content being unlocked in December. 
December, which is completely opposite for Shadowlands. After release, the graph starts to dip dramatically, a typical thing that happens with games after release. Blizzard recently came out with a whole roadmap for next year of 2023 of content coming out. Lots of cool things were revealed. My overall opinion is Dragonflight is popular as it's doing better than the last expansion, and it will be very interesting to see how things unfold and where World of Warcraft ends up in the future. The game is in a good spot right now. I hope it does continue. Make sure to subscribe for good luck and thank you for watching. Peace.